Yeah, Robert, I, I mean, I'm amazed. I'm not surprised with what the D-backs are doing with Tori Lovello at the helm. They kind of got some interesting ABs strewn throughout this lineup, starting with Corbin Carroll. Corbin Carroll and Cattell Marte, if they hit at the top of the lineup, I mean, I go back to when I first broke into the league, we'd play the Marlins a ton. And if you remember back in the day, it was Juan Pierre leading off Luis Castillo batting second. And they didn't have the pop that Corbin Carroll and Cattell Marte do to change the score and go deep. But you talk about putting a defense on its heels. I mean, we didn't know where to play these guys. They were slash bunting, hitting balls down the third baseline, causing just absolute havoc at the top of the order for the big boys, D. Lees and Cliff Floyds coming down the pike. So when I watch these guys, they're like an amplified version of those guys down in my, Miami. So pretty awesome stuff, Corbin Carroll and Cattell Marte. And I just wanted to dive in, give him a little skybox run, because he's been darn good for this team for a while. Let's get into it. He's having a hot month this month. We're going to go back to 2019. And I'm enamored with switch hitters. And today, what Shohei Otani's able to do is pause this. It's absolutely ridiculous. To focus on multiple things, I can't imagine what the time and effort he has to put into. I know what it took to get ready to be a utility player and a spot start at short and do all those things and hit from one side of the plate. So when guys try and switch hit and breaking into the league, I saw Chipper Jones do this. I'm blown away. I want to know where it started, when it started, who let you get away with it, who inspired <laughs> you to keep going on it because I know a lot of guys you think this Cedric Mullins he abandoned it in the minor leagues it is not easy and I want to give Cattell Marte because he does it the same from both sides so pause this bring up his numbers first board for me Broid. check him out in September when the team needs him 16 games 340 batting average extra base hits all over the lot 11 RBIs and on base percentage of 414 and slugging 581 Last night, get into it. The baseball gods were shining down on him, his four ABs. We're getting four knocks, and we're finding holes all over the lot. Bullet through the right side. Alex Wood comes in, infield drawn in, just play Pepper up the middle. Now bleed one into left center, and now let's chop one off the plate and beat it out. So he's got all five tools, because if you're basing it off this game, he got four nice knocks. But go back. This is a guy that can change the score with one swing. Assad, cutter, in. Wrigley at night, gone. Breaking ball, and that's been kind of the dynamic for him this year. He has really handled the breaking ball really well. Snell doesn't get a slider in from both sides of the plate. He's able to take you deep, and this was one of the bigger swings against Texas to tie the game off of Raldish Chapman. So he can beat you in a variety of ways. Pause this. He's got 23 bombs on the season. Bring up the next board, Broid. OPS leader since the start of 2021 among second basemen. So you got Altuve, and then you got Cattell Marte. He was battling for an MVP in 2019 in the National League big time numbers and then had a down year last year dealt with some hamstring stuff and he has rebounded nice so I wanted to get in to what he looks like from both sides of the plate bring that up I always wondered because I watched Chipper Jones and we can get into it he didn't hit the same way from both sides of the plate he knew he was going to face 75 80 percent right-handed pitchers so he was going to hone his craft on the left side. That's where his bunny was made, his bread was buttered. He was a toe-tap guy trying to be the best version. On the right side, he was a little bit different. When you watch Cattell Marte from 2019-2023, very similar move, maybe a bigger leg kick in 19. He has seen to clean everything up just a little bit. Not a lot of hand play. Rides that front leg a little bit longer, kind of into his backside, but he's not as aggressive as he was in 19. Flip him around. Pause that. And you see right there, just a little higher leg kick. Again, cleaning stuff up for velocity as you get older. Run it. And I remember that one of the best switch hitters of my generation, we had him on, I think it was last year. Might have been a year before that. Pause. Both look great. Run this. Lance Bergman came on the show. He was doing Team USA stuff. 
and I want to throw to some sound because to the youth coaches at home, I think the toughest thing to do is you have little Johnny walk up and dad says he wants to switch hit. And then you got bases loaded in a big spot. And he's taking his AB from the from a side of the plate that you know he's an out. So how do you deal with that? Listen to Lance Bergman. Well, I mean, I think that's where you kind of have to help kids understand whether they can or not. I mean, and you can tell pretty quickly when you watch a guy, if he has the requisite athleticism and ambidextrousness, if that's even a word, um, <laughs> to, to make it happen. I don't think there's a right answer. I mean, I yeah. wouldn't shut everybody down that wants to switch hit, but I do think it's a rare skill, and it, it just requires, um, you know, a, a special skill set to be able to do it effectively. All right, pause that real quick. I want the parents at home to listen to what one of the greatest hitters of my generation just said. You have to have the requisite skill set to do it, mm -hmm. okay? So be an honest evaluator. If mm -hmm. little Johnny swings from the right side really well and looks completely out of sorts, don't just try and make him a switch hitter. If he shows a want to and there's some movements from both sides of the plate that match up, you can go with it and work with your coach. But I think coming from one of the best hitters of my generation, you have to show the ability to pull this off. And when you watch Lance, he was very similar from both sides of the plate. Lefty and righty tried to time it up, match it up. Looks almost exactly the same. Kept two hands on the bat. He's going to lay it down nice for you. He had one of the best home run trots. Chipper, like I said, I watched him work for seven years. He was a big toe tap guy from the left side. From the right side, Don Baylor came over, told him, hey, you're not getting a ton of work from the right side. I want you on the plate, and I want you eliminating opposite field, and I want you pu thinking pull homers. Mm. And it kind of lit him up from the right side. He had a one-track mind from the right side, and he was one of the best hitters of all time from the left side. Mark Teixeira. Same thing in Texas, watched him hit 44 and 134. Mm. Just brutalizing balls to all parts of the field. So, pause this real quick. Very interesting skill set, and it's not for everyone. And then we'll just run this real quick to end it. Marte, great base running following. Pause! <laughs> don't, don't go look at the third base coach. You want to talk about when tools take over? Stay right there, the ball's right there. He's telling Corbin Carroll, stay, 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 run it. Don't go! He's like, no, do you know how fast I am? Air mail, no one's backing up. Can tell Marte. <sighs> Arizona's rolling.